During the 30 plus hours I spent with Children of Morta, I constantly battled an inner voice saying, this is your first review for Nintendo Village. You can't just go throwing around five stars. And yet, here we are. Based in Austin, Texas, Dead Mage has a history with side-scrolling action games, but even with recent releases such as Shadow Blade Reload and Epic of Kings receiving generally positive reviews, it will certainly be their four-year passion project, Children of Morta, that'll be cited as putting Dead Mage on the map. Mount Morta has been a sacred place for generations, but when the mountain god becomes angered, it is up to the Bergson family, who reside in their home at the base of Mount Morta, to rid the corruption plaguing the area that has now become a place of unspeakable evil. To boil it down to the most generic terms, Children of Morta is an action RPG roguelike dungeon crawler, which means you'll spend your time sending one of the Bergson family members into a single area of the mountain to battle enemies, collect loot, and progress as far as you can until meeting your demise or defeating a boss. At the conclusion of each run, you'll be sent back to the Bergson home to swap characters, cash in your loot, and perhaps take in a bit of the story before making your next attempt. That may sound simple, but the magic is all in the execution. Character and plot development, gameplay, and the systems that create the RPG mechanics are all exceptional. The half dozen Bergson family members all play differently. John the Patriarch battles with a sword and shield, while one son uses faster, dual-wielded daggers. And Linda, my personal favorite, handles a bow and arrow and can move while firing arrows in comparison to another character who is ranged yet can only fire while standing still. Mechanics such as building character stats are even represented by the non-playable family members such as Uncle Ben and his workbench. Every element of the game has a rich backstory and specific meaningful purpose within the larger scope of the world. And that story is the best that I have seen in an action RPG since at least Moonlighter, coincidentally also published by 11-Bit Studio. You aren't just simply given a cast of characters to throw up a mountain. In the beginning, John will initially explore the odd happenings within Mount Morta's caves, and upon returning to the family with stories of corruption and monster infestations, he will request help from his firstborn daughter Linda to investigate further, and things unravel slowly from there. Where the approach to plot development really differs in Children of Morta is how it marries with the other procedural elements of the game. Even the best roguelike games, such as Dead Cells for example, have generic or shallow at best plot lines because every player will progress at a different pace, especially when you have multiple characters and a bunch of random story elements. Somehow though, Children of Morta weaves the story beats together throughout your runs into the mountain and are triggered by variables such as running into another family member, being defeated in the very early minutes of one of your attempts, or finding a new character peddling their wares off the beaten path. You could run into your grandma who's investigating a magic rune she's heard about in the caves, or Kevin, the youngest son, honing his skills by fighting away in a room of low-level enemies off the beaten path. Upon returning to the Bergson home, for whatever reason, the characters will discuss whatever recent event has occurred and then seamlessly transition to the plot's central current focus, keeping everything within the context of ultimately discovering and purging the source of Mount Morta's corruption. It feels almost magical in execution. It's always brief yet welcome, relevant yet somehow perfectly timed, and consistently well presented and executed. And now, as this is an RPG, there are plenty of systems working in unison to ensure every single run has some kind of new element. It could be a simple attack or defense stat change, new abilities for defense or offense, or a character-specific buff that impacts the entire family. Across 40 or so runs myself, with each one lasting about 15 or 20 minutes, only a couple were ever started without a brand new ability. And even those outliers would end up rotating playable characters, which is actually necessary because if you lean on any one family member for too long, they will become fatigued, which temporarily reduces one of their key stats until they rest for your next couple of runs. It requires you to constantly cycle in and out the different characters, which is constantly giving you a different gameplay experience. And that is one of my favorite elements 
benefits of the formula in Children of Morta. Family-wide buffs such as the father granting health regen or the melee-focused son granting higher dodge percentages are significant and drastically impact how you will approach each run. Of course, this would all be moot if the action itself wasn't engaging. Thankfully, it's some of the smoothest hack and slash gameplay I've ever experienced, sitting comfortably alongside series like Diablo and Torchlight. Furthermore, as each character levels up and you assign points to a small but effective skill tree, the family members will not only gain permanent family-wide buffs as mentioned earlier, but even will become support for other family members when they are not your active playable character. Lucy, the long-range magician who cannot move while attacking, but is able to dash around the screen like crazy, gains the ability to drop in and unleash her tornado skill if another family member uses an AoE ability, or can even drop a decoy of herself if one of her siblings evades an attack at just the right time. It's wonderfully woven into the threads of each run and makes the battle always exciting. As you work your way through the 20 or so levels, grouped two or three at a time and spread across four different environments, you will explore procedurally generated levels that never resulted in a disappointing role. The levels contain occasional shopkeepers, other family members, and engaging side quests. There's even mini games spread throughout, such as rooms with memory games and even a version of Pong that almost always results in a much needed HP boost. You'll find a variety of relics, runes, and charms, some of which add temporary buffs to your attacks, while others will provide game-changing stat improvements for the duration of your run, as well as abilities like turrets or traps that run on cooldowns just like your other permanent abilities. As far as performance is concerned, it's perfectly acceptable with a gorgeous art style similar to Moonlighter or even Hyperlight Drifter. On a few occasions though, the frame rate does dip when things get chaotic on screen, but I never blamed any errors or deaths on performance issues. I did, however, encounter four hard crashes which caused me to lose the run in progress entirely, and one of those times was at the end boss of an entire world, and after losing that battle due to a hard crash, it took me over a half dozen attempts to finally conquer it a second time. The crashes were caused, I've found, by putting the game in and out of sleep multiple times during a single run. As I was playing the game over a long weekend and watching my two small kids, I frequently had to put my Switch in and out of sleep maybe as many as five or more times during one of the longer 40 minute runs. I would notice the sound start to cut out and I knew what was coming. Hopefully this is resolved with an upcoming patch. It is avoidable though and by knowing the telltale signs you could always abort your run if you notice the audio hiccups starting but it's worth bearing in mind at the very least. During the run-up to the final encounters of the game, I found myself gasping at certain events and pining to learn what happens next to the Bergson family. The ending was satisfying and I just want more Children of Morta. Thankfully, Dead Mage is apparently working on some post-game content. Until that releases though, I can see myself starting a new save file or even playing on another platform entirely because there is plenty of room to build out a completely different playstyle among the Bergsons you call your own. Like many gamers in 2019, I went through this year trying to figure out which title was my personal game of the year, but after just a couple of hours with Children of Morta, the decision was easy. With addictive mechanics, a significant variety of playstyles, and character development that let me craft a team specifically tuned to my preferences, every single run up the mountain was a pure joy. In between the battles, I was enthralled with the story and captivated by the music. Writing this now, I'm finding it difficult to play other games and only want to start from the beginning all over again. Lucky for me, when I do restart my quest to purge the evil from Mount Morta, I'll have a brand new experience right alongside the Bergson family I've come to know and love. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, check out some of our other videos, and visit thenintendovillage.com, your home for everything Nintendo.